Welcome back. I'm Mike from Goliath here with Chris from Goliath, and we're talking about a new reference design that we have out. This one is based around the CAN bus, which I, if people don't know what that is, Chris, do you want to give a quick overview? Sure, sure. It's a bus that exists uh, mostly in cars, but also in other devices. Uh, you see them sometimes in small electric vehicles, small uh, motorized vehicles. But basically, it's an easy way to have a low number of wires to connect a lot of different devices. You might have a battery system, sensors, your car probably has an oxygen sensor, for instance. And we're able to then tap into that uh, bus and start to read those things back, process the data, and or just shuttle the raw readings up to the cloud. And that's what we're doing here with this reference design. For me, one of the really interesting things is the more you dig into CAN bus, the more you realize like nothing in your car is attached to each other. They're all in this data bus and sending data back and forth. And so that's why I find this uh, to be really interesting. Once you have CAN bus data, that's like the whole ball game. You could do a ton with that. And we are doing a ton with that. We're actually gathering data from the vehicle and sending it up to the cloud right now. Uh, so uh, what kind of data are, are we harvesting, Chris? Well, an interesting thing is uh, basically if tens of years ago, uh, as efficiency standards and emission standards became more important, they started to require that there's a standard connector on cars. And this is often referred to as onboard diagnostics two. I'm not sure what one was, but OBD two is something <laughs> you'll hear often. And that's the connector you're going to see here in a second. And the CAN bus is actually uh, one of the CAN buses because there often are multiple CAN buses within a car. One of them is actually available at that at that interface. You can then go and plug into it. If you've ever had a emissions check on your car, often they just plug the computer in. That's what a lot of mechanics will say. They plug the computer in. They can get diagnostic codes, they can also get readings off of your O2 sensor and your emissions uh, relevant things from that. And that's what we're doing here. There are a standard set of messages there that we then collect and we're able to shuttle up to the cloud. In this case, we're actually just showing one reading, which is uh, kind of interesting, which is the vehicle speed. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like here. Uh, here is our uh, device and our what it looks like. We modified this from the cold chain design, Mike, which you, you designed. Maybe you could give us a, a quick recap on what that is. Yeah, so the cold chain design, if you watched that previous video, was tracking things that need to remain at a specific temperature, like vaccines or food. And it just basically took mm -hmm. a temperature reading, it had a GPS module in it, and it associated a moment in time with a place on Earth with the temperature of the payload. And so we're doing something very similar here, except instead of temperature, we're grabbing speed off of the CAN bus. That's right. And so in this case, uh, if we take a little bit of a closer look here, you see this is the standard connector. So most of the time what you would see in your car is actually this side of things. This is what if you poke around underneath your dashboard, you say left of your steering wheel. If you're in the US, US of course, uh, other cars are on the other side. Uh, uh, you have access to this uh, this bus here. And uh, in doing so, you, you can plug in a connector that looks like this. You often see a lot of off the shelf designs that look like this sort of thing that accesses the OBD2 port, you plug them together, and uh, then you can, uh, so in our case, we actually had to go and make a simulator. In this case, this is a RP2040 based simulator, uh, also using a CAN transceiver, and we can modulate the vehicle speed up and down. And then over here, if I can find it, gotta cycle through all the different readings here. Oh boy. I think you could Should've do the, the uh, summary on the top and it'll yeah. show. Yeah, there's, there's a summary. There it is yeah. summary. Not quite big enough, but there that's the one I wanted. There, there we go. go. Uh, and so you can see the, the speed here. This is all programmable. Uh, we just have a little turn knob there and we can change it up and down. And this is a great way for you able to just visualize it here. Uh, in this case, you know, if you're using this reference design, you probably have this maybe up on your dash or you might have it underneath. Uh, underneath and then you'd have a cable plugged in. Uh, miniaturization options in the future would be to, to build it kind of all into a plug, like an OBD2 plug. Often you'll see devices that look like that sort of thing. And uh, you know, smaller versions of this could definitely go in, onto a connector uh, here. <clears throat> but then, like I said, you would just be reading off these standard readings here. In this case, we're doing uh, the, the speed of the car. And you might see this uh, things outside of uh, just just the speed, you might be able to pull in other things, but one use case that we've seen is actually like in the insurance industry, uh, a lot of times you'll see that they actually will give you a, uh, a not a bonus, but like a, a lower rate on your insurance if you're willing to let them plug a device in your car, track your acceleration, your speed, 
yeah. maybe your location, usually not your location, uh, but basically see if you're a safe driver in so many ways. Yeah. Looks like so, you break a little hard there, Chris. So no discount right. for you. Uh, but that's the cool right. thing is since we are uploading all this information over the cellular network, we have it available here, which is what uh, Chris is showing right now, a dashboard that is putting up that both location data, time data, and speed data all at once. Right. This is one of our teammates who plugged this into his car, drove around his neighborhood. Uh, and uh, you can actually see as he was accelerating, uh, accelerating, hitting stop signs, things like that. We're charting all of this in Grafana right now. So we can actually go and zoom in, see where there were maybe stop signs here. So this looks like it was probably pretty close. So that looks like a stop sign right there. Uh, and then we can uh, zoom back out by just using the back button. And uh, you can see all of this different data here. We also do some some. Uh, statistical data just around average speeds, minimums, maximums, and last reported. So if I zoom in on the chart here, we should see a roughly yeah, 50, 51 was the last reported speed in this uh, in this example, and it's uh, basically the far right here. But all of these are just pulling data from the Goliath REST API and then pushing into a charting program because if you have latitude and longitude and you have a time, you can start to map that stuff out there, much like we did on the cold chain demo. And these are always a little bit hard to demonstrate because it's probably better one of us is not driving in the car while they try to record a video. Uh, but if we were to do that, you would see this data coming in, coming in live. And so uh, you don't have to wait. It, uh, that data can be cached if you're outside of cellular range for later upload. Mm -hmm. But when you have an, a connection, if you want live data, you can get it. And that's really cool for things where you might need to diagnose like um, I the driver's reporting problems with the vehicle. Can I log in live to the device and uh, read some error codes off of the ECU, which is on the CAN bus? There are other things that you can think about, like uh, the vehicle broke down and the driver's no longer with the vehicle. And now the tow truck driver is asking for access to the cab. You could actually send a signal down if you had implemented the unlock uh, CAN bus command for your particular vehicle. So I think there is, like I said, once you have you know one thing coming in from the CAN bus, kind of the sky's the limit then. Yeah, so uh, we, we see a lot of different applications here. Obviously, we're doing things on uh, using the OBD2. The, if you look internally and actually what's on this cable here, it's really a ground, it's a high and a low for the can, the can high and low. And so that could then be taken out of the OBD2 context and you could just plug it into just about any other OBD, or sorry, CAN bus, which is often just a couple of wires there. And you could start to read messages off that CAN bus. This looks like just another drop on that CAN bus. CAN bus requires usually a, a terminator uh, in order to, to, to read the signals there because you have small uh, differential voltages ac across a resistor. And then in doing so, you could basically tap into potentially a, you know, potentially a small electric scooter or maybe even a larger thing like a, a trash truck where you don't have an OBD2 for some reason, or maybe you don't have access to an OBD2. Uh, you could just go and tap into the CAN bus directly as well. So we really see a lot of different uh, capabilities and a lot of different areas where we could go and use this sort of thing. Mike, what else do you think uh, uh, some of the readings that you might want to use or other features of the Goliath platform that might be a good fit for something like this. Yeah, I mean, there are uh, alarms or warnings that you could put if the vehicle is over speed. So if you demand a level of safety from your fleet drivers, you could let them know like, hey, 70 is the highest speed limit in this state. And if you go over 70, it's going to report back. Uh, for the, that kind of thing, just let people know like there is uh, some quality control there. But I also think um, the ability, for instance, to have a um, a thermostat reading coming in so you can see like, is this vehicle running in spec in real time? These are things, if you think about your dashboard, it usually has like a needle with like a C or an yeah. H for cold or hot. You don't really have any you know good data on um, where that's running other than it's creeping up one way or the other. But again, if you're managing an entire fleet, watching that change over time and seeing that one vehicle is operating in a different range than others can let you do uh, preventive maintenance. Right, definitely. And and like I said, there are a range of uh, what are called PIDs. So there's uh, published PIDs that are out there. These are just on Wikipedia, but these are some of the PD PIDs you can actually access here, fuel rail, gauges, sensors, uh, even battery packs things like that. And uh, these are just the standard ones on an OBD2. Then you could go and create custom ones or go and just look for custom ones. We have seen some customers that actually wanted just to, to just take raw CAN packets and chuck those up to the cloud and then do some diagnostics on the cloud as well without them actually being decoded. That's another thing that Goliath can do as well. So really, uh, this is just a starting point that we see uh, a lot of different 
application spaces, a lot of different ways that you can go and interact with your hardware. And we're excited about that sort of thing. Uh, Mike, if people are interested in learning more, where can they where can they learn more about this design and other reference designs for Goliath? Yeah, I think the coolest thing about this is that although we're showing you like a, a custom box that we display at conferences, this you can be built and run with off the shelf components that you can buy today. So you could have this up and running this week. And we have a list of those components on the project page for this, which you're going to find at projects.goliath.io. Awesome. Well, more reference designs coming at you soon. Uh, more uh, interesting ways to run them yourself. So please do get in touch. If you have any questions about this or other reference designs, you can do so over forum.goliath.io. Send us an email, devrel at goliath.io. Thanks, Mike. See you next time.